state government bans motorcycle operations and cuts telecommunication services in some areas as insecurity increases. Nigeria ranks low in digital quality of life survey. And Airpeace gets bashing for delaying flights for more than three hours and getting passengers arrested. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's a beautiful Thursday morning in Lagos. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogboa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on a Thursday. Uh, it looks like it might be a wet Thursday morning across Lagos. If you look outside your window, it, I, I felt like it was going to rain uh, this mm. morning. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind as you step out of the house this morning. And we hope that it's going to be a very, very beautiful uh, Thursday. Yes. And uh, our first top training story really... It falls from what you said yesterday when there were unconfirmed reports of the murder of the husband, of the, of the former boss of the um, Nigeria or National um, Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ. Um, the news has finally been confirmed and what we're hearing in some quarters is that his death might have been um, at the hand of IPOB militants. That's un still unconfirmed. You know, the question remains, who killed um, Chike Akunyili? Um, the story really says that he yesterday he attended a function where he even donated money. It was a function for um, to honor his wife, his late wife, and then this happened. I mean, eyewitnesses say we saw him. He donated money to us, at least five hundred thousand naira, and he was leaving. We all hugged him, said goodbye, and later we saw videos, very you know gruesome videos of him in a suit and a tie, as well as a uh, pants as well, and then. You know, that video too gory to even describe what happened there. But it's something that has left questions in the minds of many Nigerians. Who really killed Chiki Akunyili and for what reasons? Oh, well, um, I'd, well I'd, as um, we would expect, you know, with many, many other situations like this, you know, it's, it's always expected that we may never know the uh, truth um, with regards to this. Um, the video, I have chosen to not watch it, and I hope that I never get to watch it, um, because I don't think I want to ever have that memory of uh, Chike Akunyili um, in that position or, you know, like that. Um, it's really, really sad and really, 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 really painful, you know, and, you know, I've said it this week multiple times that Nigeria can happen to you at any time, um, but I don't even think that Chike Akunyili deserves, you know, to be put into that narrative because of how painful this is. Um, and that's why I started yesterday by saying it wasn't confirmed yet, but it's also going to be one of the most shocking things that will happen this week. Um, and as, as always, you know, it's also expected painfully that we would still move on from, you know, this is, this will not be in any way enough for the Nigerian government, the South Eastern government, for everyone who is concerned or, in, in, you know, who is uh, relevant to take, you know, um, in new steps in to, you know, to ensure that there's security and safety of lives and property in the South East and across Nigeria. This would not be a big shock. Um, painfully, and that's where we found ourselves in Nigeria. I've asked this multiple times, like what would be that thing that would be big enough uh, to get the Nigerian government to understand how much they have failed with regards to protection of lives and, and property? Um, what would be big enough for the Nigerian people themselves to look at and say, okay, this, you know, has, this is the, the, the straw that has broken the camel's back. Um, what exactly would that thing be? It's, it's, it's obviously not death. It's not death of hundreds, neither is it death of popular people. Um, it's not death of the good, the bad, or the ugly. It's, it's really just absolutely nothing. And that's how um, thick-skinned or maybe dead inside that Nigerians have become to certain things. It hurts, you know, because the Akunilis basically gave their all to Nigeria. Uh, Chike was a medical doctor. I remember his hospital in uh, Transikulu. Um, he was able to successfully build a new one a few years ago um, or, you know, expand, you know, what, what it was before a couple of years ago. And he has been known 
um, for you know what he's contributed to you know healthcare uh, to the southeast and to whole, the whole of Nigeria. Aside, you know what his wife was known for himself, Chike Akunyele was you know a, a phenomenal human being. Um, a philanthropist. He, he was everything that you would want, you know, to see as a mentor and a, as a role model for uh, a person, you know, um, of that uh, caliber. So um, it hurts, you know, and I cannot imagine what the, uh, the kids, the Akinle children, would be dealing with. Um, seeing their father in that position, um, basically trying and you know, you know, trying to survive. You know, you know what happened. Um, I don't want to, you know, imagine what kind of trauma that would cause them. Um, but most importantly, the Akunilis gave their all to Nigeria. They both have lost, you know, their lives. Um, and, you know, it, it cannot be explained how hurtful this is. Um, who, you know, is responsible? Nobody we know. The DSS has said that they're not responsible. And I think they were responding to um, allegations by the IPOB saying that, you know, it's likely the, the DSS. Um, there's also people who said that, you know, it may not even be the IPOB. It might just be, uh, you know, robbers or assassins. Um, there's people who say that it may be the IPOB and that... Um, they didn't know who he was um, before, you know, they you know, carried out that action and eventually killed him and his escort and drive, I believe. Um, there's many, many narratives. Um, but most importantly, what will the Nigerian government do? What will the Anambra state government do? What will the southeastern governments, you know, in, in general do um, with regards to Chike Akunibu's death? It can't, I can't, you know, and, you know, I think I said this yesterday that, you know, I'm, I'm slowly and slowly starting to... Um, become also affected by having to speak about these things every morning because they eventually, um, it's becoming traumatizing, you know, mentally and emotionally for me to have to deal with Nigeria every day and have to share stories on Nigeria every day. It's, it's really not even a healthy place to be, uh, to talk about these things like we're talking about the price of bread. These are lives, people, families, husbands, daughters, wives. Um, it's, it's just not normal uh, to have these type of conversations every single day for years um, in, in any way. It, it's, it's not healthy and it's not normal at all. Mm -hmm. But rest in peace to Dr. Chike Akonyele. Rest in peace to him. We really hope that the police this time actually gets to the bottom of the situation and you know just does the investigation to find out exactly who killed Chike Akonyele and why exactly. To be honest, at this point, I don't care. And the reason I don't care is because of what the Nigerian police has been like in the last few years. Forever, actually, not the last few years. Um, anybody can be brought up, you know, and you know, be, be said to be the uh, uh, found killers of Dr. Chike Akunyele. And half of the people who see that story will not even believe that they are the ones who are responsible. Um, and also, it doesn't solve the security challenges. <laughs> Whoever it is that the police arrest mm -hmm. doesn't in any way address the security challenges. And so, doing that photo op. Raiding whatever village in Umpo, in Anambra State, and arresting a couple of people that maybe would be the ones who actually carried out that, that, that attack doesn't solve the, the, the challenge. If we still aren't doing anything to ensure that Nigeria is safer, then it, this is just one waiting for the next one to happen. And so that's why I really don't even care. I mean, yes, you, you encourage them to do their job and make sure that the family gets justice, but it, it, it's, it's not the answer to our problems in any way. Half of the people who are going to see whatever the police is going to do now, more than half actually don't even believe, you know, those things, sadly. Okay. So our next up trending story really takes us to the airports across Nigeria. And one name really comes to mind. It's Air Peace. Um, so the top trending story is that the hashtag boycott Air Peace has been trending on social media. And that's because the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria fan uh, basically arrested two Air Peace passengers um, a few days ago. So th what the story is saying is that uh, the flight, an Air Peace flight was delayed for about three hours and one of the passengers who was concerned went to talk to one of the officials to say, our flight has been delayed for about three hours, what's happening? And the man kept quiet, so what he did was push him in the face. That really was assault right there. Very wrong of him to do so. So another lady, her offense, she was arrested. Her offense was um, basically bringing out her mobile phone and recording passengers complain about the poor services of Airpiece because we know that Airpiece has this you know, reputation of 
delaying flights. People call them out on social media every now and then. So this man, Mr. Paul Samuel, um, was arrested by fan officials. Um, Rita Okura for arrested by fan officials as well for recording and putting it on social media. They told her that she had no rights to record and she had to stop the recordings, but she continued recording, putting that on social media. They arrested both of them. They closed the boarding gates. They um, seized their flight tickets, put them in a van, drove them away, gave them forms to fill, and all of that. So um, that really is what the situation is about. But we have a track really that explains better. Take a listen. <laughs> All right. Um, you, well, basically just uh, showing you clips from, you know, where it all started yesterday. But, you know, of course, it started actually at 7 p.m. when the flight was meant to take off. Um, eventually it was late till about 11 p.m. And, you know, you know, all that drama ensued. Um, what I, you know, would continue to find shocking is, you know, how Nigerian companies, uh, mostly uh, airpiece and, you know, um, you know, basically airlines in Nigeria don't understand that passengers have a right to complain. And when you complain, customer service. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the important thing with customer service, you know, when you complain, they might bring you small chops and, you know, some soda and, you know, expect you to calm down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that was very important is if you listen to the clip, one of the things uh, that was said there where a woman was saying it's not your fault, you know, if Nigeria was safer, you know, a lot of people wouldn't even be flying, mm -hmm. which is very, very true. I remember there was a photo a couple of days ago where uh, some government officials in the north were complaining that their flight was delayed for about two, three hours. You know, and people were asking them, I mean, you guys have been saying roads are safe in the north and traveling safe. Why don't you go by road? Mm -hmm. It's not so far, you know. But of course, you know, these are some of the things that you would have to experience because Nigeria is not, you know, currently safe enough mm -hmm. uh, for road travel. Um, Customer service in Nigeria, who really defends the customers? Who stands, you know, for the customers? What is the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria meant to be doing in a situation like this? Um, they shouldn't only be relevant, or they, they basically manage the airports. Um, but, you know, there has to be a body that stands for customers. It cannot just be social media. Um, there has to be somebody, um, and unfortunately, I'm not very sure now, who really should take, um, you know, the, the rights of customers more importantly at a time like this. You know, eventually this might end up, you know, as a lawsuit. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and nobody even really even trusts that the courts will be able to, you know, rule in their favor. Um, so Airpiece needs to do better. They've been known for, you know, delayed flights somehow, some way. Um, their chairman, you know, has, of course, in overtime also been, been indicted for 
uh, money laundering or has that money laundering you know charge a few a months ago a few years ago in the United States um, and so it's not just good PR for them he has also tried to do whatever it is possible to change the narrative concerning airpiece where if you remember the speech that he gave to the super Eagles not long ago which everyone everyone applauded um, and also you know when he also rescued Nigerians from South Africa which are really really good things but his staff eventually now go and throw all, some of all those good things in the mud with their attitude and with the failure of the airline to just you know do what is right when customers are, um, are upset okay so really um i believe that you know like you said customer service should be prioritized because it is the customers who pay for the sustenance of those businesses it, it is the customers that keep them afloat so I believe that businesses should do better with regards to customer service, prioritize customer's welfare. When they complain, take that very seriously because your customers really can be your undoing. I mean, when a customer um, goes ahead to make complaints like this, you see hashtag boycott airpiece is trending all over social media. And there's some people who say, oh, I stopped flying airpiece 2003, 2005 after they delayed me for this and that. So let businesses do better. And like you mentioned, we need to find out what are the customer protection agencies and laws that you know, we should have recourse to. And are the mechanisms for reporting this you know, even there? Do customers get um, compensation when they complain? I'm sure that some of these things exist, but the point is how many people know? Because it all starts with awareness. How many people are aware of whatever channel is available for you to complain when you, know, you do not get the service you pay for? And when you eventually complain, having known what agency you need to complain to, how much of a compensation do you get? But I, think, I think there was a, just to quickly mention, I think there was a, a, a time not very long ago where the National Assembly had uh, debated laws, you know, to punish uh, airlines for delayed flights. I remember that, that we, we it talked was about stated, that. It was stated that when you delay a flight for about an hour, at least an hour, you should serve refreshments. When it's more than three hours, it was recent, that you should go ahead and refund their flight tickets. But... This is Nigeria. That's why I said it's not. It's yeah. beyond knowing what agencies to report to. When you eventually report, do you get the compensation you deserve? That that really was um, the sum of what I was saying. So I'm going to go back to our first top trending story. That's because I found breaking news about um, um, Chiki Akunjili, who was killed um, yesterday. I think that was in Anamra on Tuesday. So the DSS put out a statement. They said that. Uh, they, they heard news that um, the DSS has been fingered for being involved in the death of Chiki Akunyili. So um, Peter Funaya, the PRO of the DSS, says that um, the DSS um, cherishes life, believes in the rule of law, and that they have no reason to kill the medical doctor or fellow law enforcement agencies. They said this really is that a desperate effort to divert attention, deploy reverse psychology, to deceive unsuspecting members of the public, and that really, that they never really had anything to do with the death of Chike Akunili. So the DSS is saying, we are not involved. Now, while it seems the DSS has spoken out, the IPOB, Indigenous People of Biafra, have spoken out as well. The spokesman, Peter Afunaya, put out a statement saying that they do not know Chike Afunaya, um, Chike Akunyili, rather. Imano Powerful. And that, yes, Imano Powerful said he does not know um, Chike Akunyili. He has nothing to do with him. He went on to say that the people who killed Chike Akunyili, this is what Imano Powerful, IPOB spokesman, is saying, that the people who killed Chike Akunyili are people who are contesting the Anambra elections, the Anambra governorship elections. They also said that they are the same people who poisoned the late Dora. I mean, let me read out a statement for you. He said... Those who killed Dora Kuyili's husband killed his wife with poison. Oh, my God. So he went on and on and on to um, continue to say things about that. He also said that uh, they are Fulani. I, I don't know why he had to throw that in, but he said because she exposed Yaradua's death for good luck, Ibele Jonathan, to take over as president of Nigeria, that they know themselves, they conspired to kill her, and they, now they, they have killed her husband over the, um, you know, the contest of the um, governorship election in Anamra State. They have no issue with Chike Akunyili. We do not know him. Those behind the act must stop and stop using the IPOB name and that uh, this is pure political assassination. This is what they're really saying. Well, I think um, I, I, I already, DSS, I already mentioned, involvement with, I already mentioned with, you know, all that. of this. Um, the DSS response was really to the IPOB's accusations. Um, and of course, those who had said that it might be politically motivated and some of all of that. Um, Moral of the story is that the Southeast is currently very, very unsafe and, you know, uh, more work needs to be done uh, for people in, this, in the Southeast. It's not the first time there's, there's been assassinations in Enugu State. 
um, you know, um, multiple times, you know, and this is maybe just the highest, you know, profile person that has, uh, you know, has uh, been killed. Um, but anyway, hmm. recipes so, once again. Yes, our final top trending story is about paternity leave. Um, yesterday at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting, um, head of the civil service, uh, Mrs. Esson announced that um, a few weeks have been granted, two weeks actually, have been granted to fathers as paternity leave. So before now, we only had the maternity leave where women had 12 weeks. You had um, a few weeks before, your, before you deliver, before your due date, and a few weeks after you deliver. But that was reviewed, I think, in 2018. And they said, we're going to increase that from three months to four months. And women had um, a few months before um, their due date and a few months after. Then when you give birth, of course, and you, you come back to the office, you're allowed to close early, you know, just so that the, the burden of, you know, um, combining work at the home front and at the office, you know, doesn't take its toll on you. But now they're saying that, you know, fathers also deserve that time to bond with their children. And if you give birth, or if you're, what you're, you know, that's how they say, we're pregnant, we're given birth, we have a child, the man tries to get that ownership, I understand. So if you give birth, if you have a baby, um, and you work in the civil service, you can definitely apply for a two-week uh, paternity leave, so you can be at home and spend time with your family. I think this is good. I'm looking forward to the next few years, that, you know, going up to maybe even a month. I don't know if that's going to be possible. But it's, it's a good thing, because we know that in other parts of the country, paternity leave, you know, it's, it's even more. Men get more time off work. They even get uh, about 60% or so of their salary still paid. Um, there's job security there. But um, good to know that Nigeria is trying to catch up. Yeah, um, I did, did, you know, so really, I think Norway has about 10 weeks uh, for paternity leave. Um, Slovenia, uh, fathers in Slovenia are given about 12 weeks paternity leave. Lithuania and Hungary have uh, parents uh, taken up to 150 weeks. Um, of work. You, you know, know, those countries mostly, are high in the index when you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, I just wanted that. to point that out. Um, and that is, of course, like you mentioned, is, you know, because parents need time to bond with their children. You know, we've had this Omogwa uh, tradition for a long time, you mm -hmm. know, which brings, I'm not sure who's mother, mother now. Is the mother, is it the mother of the woman or the mother of the man? Maybe I think it's the mother of the woman um, to, you know, come take care of the child, you know, but I think that that's not. Um, you know, it, it's important, you know, that we also understand, you know, the, the role that the father should also play in that time. And he does need time off work uh, to be with his wife and to be with the child, not, you know, just the child, but to be with the wife also, uh, to play his role as a father. Give that um, support. And that, yeah, absolutely, to be in the house, you know, while she is, of course, uh, you, know, you know, healing from uh, childbirth. Um, there's many, many, many postpartum issues that, you know, aren't discussed a lot here in Nigeria. Um, that I feel like parents you know, need to work through together. It cannot be when he gets back from work at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. He has to be there um, 24 hours with the wife, you know, to do with those postpartum issues, hair loss, um, you know, pains. You Even know, depression. You know, and, and, and depression, yeah, all of that. Um, those are things that, you know, both parents need to work hand in hand, you know, with. And, of course, you know, it's a little stressful also for the men. Um, having to go through that that period, I actually tried to have a conversation on, uh, about a month ago, and you know, speak with husbands and see what they also deal with postpartum. What are the things that what they have to find? also deal with? Um, a lot of them. Um, so a lot of them, you know, responded with, you know, I choose not to speak, you know, because it will get me in trouble. You know, that's. Okay. Um, so I think it's 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 personal to their marriages, and so they mm. would rather not put those things out there, but. Um, it's, it's, the point is really just to ex, you know, express that there are those issues that fathers also need to um, have to deal with. You know, it may not be as major as what the woman goes uh, through. We, we, need you know? Know. we need to know. We need to know, actually. Yeah. Um, it may not be they as need, major as what the, what the woman well. goes through. Yes, you know, but for the child, for the woman, and for you know, the family unit itself, um, yes, they deserve some leave. And I don't even think two weeks is enough. I think it really should be as much as, you know, but a month it's a or good two start. They, they never had Absolutely. this prior to this Absolutely. Time. So those are our top trending stories for you this morning. Um, we shared you um, just information about the death of Chike Akunili and controversy surrounding who killed him. Um, airpiece delaying flights up to three hours and then um, arresting two passengers as well as the fact that the federal government has now approved the two-week paternity leave for fathers. Um, stay with us on breakfast. We'll be back to take a look at the stories in the headlines.